Friends, our drone ships are equivalent to the size of a football field. So uh, while it may have looked kind of small on your screen, they're actually pretty ginormous in real life. <laughs> it's got to be to hold a rocket, right? Um, as, man as mentioned previously, Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket. It's so two rockets in one. Above the first stage is the second stage. Now, the second stage has a single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC, engine, which ignites after the Start first stage, stage separates. Cryo-helium loading. Now, the second stage is essentially a smaller version of the first stage, and whereas the first stage is designed to power the vehicle out of Earth's atmosphere in the forces of gravity, the second stage is specifically designed to operate in the vacuum of space. The second stage powers the Dragon spacecraft to its specific, specific targeted drop-off point in orbit. The Dragon spacecraft is capable of carrying up to seven passengers to and from Earth orbit and beyond, uh, but for today's mission, it is carrying four members of the Axiom-1 crew. It is the first private spacecraft to take humans to the space station and the only spacecraft currently flying that is capable of returning significant amounts of cargo to Earth. Like the Falcon 9 rocket, uh, the Dragon spacecraft is also reusable. Today will be the third flight to space uh, for this Dragon spacecraft uh, that the Axiom-1 crew is flying in today. Uh, the previous flights for this th this capsule supported were uh, recently the Crew-2 mission and before that the Demo-2 mission, uh, which was our first human spaceflight mission. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Now, as we await T-0 in just under 25 minutes, the ground operations teams are doing a series of system checks to make sure both Dragon and Falcon 9 are ready for launch. Let's take a look at what the ascent portion of this mission will look like. Right, so once we hit T minus zero, we will watch Falcon 9 and Dragon lift off from historic launch pad 39A and make their ascent. At about 50 seconds into flight, Falcon 9's engines will throttle down to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket, or what we typically refer to as max Q. It's worth noting that once we hit max Q, the vehicle will be going supersonic. Once we're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, we can throttle up our Merlin engines again. From there, at about two and a half minutes into flight, we have a series of three events that happen in rapid succession. The first of which is MECO, or main engine cutoff. This is where all nine Merlin engines shut off in preparation for stage separation, which, as the name suggests, that is where the first stage detaches from the second stage, with the first stage making its way back to Earth for landing as the second stage continues on its journey with the third event. Right, now SES-1, or second engine start one, is where the Merlin vacuum engine lights up and propels the second stage, along with our AX-1 crew, into orbit. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first stage is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite and then shut down. This helps to slow the stage down in preparation for entry back into Earth's atmosphere. While the first stage is heading back to Earth, the second stage will cut off its singular Merlin engine and that was ignited right after stage separation. Once this happens, we'll wait for confirmation of good orbital insertion. About 90 seconds after Dragon gets into orbit, Falcon 9 will land back on Earth. The landing burn, which is a single engine burn, will bring the vehicle's speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship uh, at about nine and a half minutes into the mission. And while Falcon 9's first stage is landing, Dragon is preparing to separate from the second stage. At about three minutes after the second stage gets into orbit, we should have a great view of Dragon with its four-person crew drifting away from the second stage. Now, once Dragon is a short distance away, it will begin checking out its Draco maneuvering thrusters to make sure Dragon continues to increase separation distance from the second stage. And lastly, the nose cone deploy sequence will initiate just before T plus 12 minutes and finish around T plus 15 minutes. Uh, and this sequence will expose Dragon's docking mechanism in advance of its arrival at the International Space Station. So, uh, as you can tell, it's it's a pretty jam-packed 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention. Pay close attention to what you're listening to. Don't blink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with all of that in mind, uh, let's head back over to Dan Hewitt for an update uh, from the ISS team over at Johnson Space Center. Dan? 
Hey, thanks, Kate. Now, inside the room, the International Space Station Flight Control Room, Flight Director Scott Stover is leading the teams right now. But just about four hours ago, NASA Flight Director Diane Daly gave a go on behalf of the combined ISS team to the SpaceX uh, mission director, just saying that ISS or the space station was go for launch. Now, to get there, we've got a list of flight rules, basically just guidelines for all of the major systems we have to make sure are functioning on board station before we can give a go to launch another crew up there. So we're looking at everything from those core critical command and control computers, verifying we have a good communication path through our tracking and data relay satellites, uh, ensuring that the atmosphere, all of the life support systems on board are functioning, even the mechanical systems like the docking port where this mission is headed. So... We're expecting today's flight to be about a 20 and a half hour journey from launch to docking uh, with the Crew Dragon Endeavor headed towards the Node 2 Zenith. That's the space facing port on the top uh, of Node 2, the Harmony module on board the station. And once they get there, they're going to get welcomed by the Expedition 67 crew, which is made up of seven individuals right now, four from our SpaceX through Crew 3 mission with three NASA astronauts and one ESA European astronaut. Uh, and they're joined by three cosmonauts that just arrived on station about two weeks ago. Now, so it's going to take them about 20 and a half hours to get there. That docking right now is targeted for 11.45 GMT on Saturday. That's 6.45 AM here in Houston, 4.45 for the teams over in Hawthorne. And so once they get there, they'll be able to get out of their suits uh, on board the Dragon spacecraft uh, while the team on board station moves into what's known as uh, uh, the hatch operations, uh, Station Commander Tom Archer is going to be pressurizing that small area between Dragon uh, and the station hatches. We expect it to be a little under two hours from docking to hatch open, and then we'll welcome the AX-1 crew on board the space station. So a lot to come with that 20-and-a-half-hour journey, but all that's going to start with a launch. So I'll send it back over to Hawthorne as we get into the final phases of the countdown. Back over to you, John. Right. Well, Dan, as you mentioned, it all starts with the launch. And, Kate, it's looking like it's getting pretty busy here. People are excited about seeing a launch, right? Yeah. We're just now under 20 minutes until liftoff. Um, as you could probably tell by the, the noise, uh, the crew here, excuse me, the, the, the crowd here in Hawthorne, uh, we're at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, um, is starting to gather uh, just beyond mission control here uh, in the building. And uh, you might be able to tell by the ambient noise. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the live production noises that you also hear. You know, we are in a rocket factory. Um, but yeah, you can see there the crowd is starting to grow behind the mission, the team there at Hawthorne Mission Control. Now we saw Dan speaking earlier from uh, Mission Control in Johnson. There is a Mission Control Center uh, in Florida where the SpaceX teams are also gathered um, in firing room four. And then we have the, the launch, or excuse me, the Mission Control Center here. Uh, there's a, a shot of our firing room four there in Florida at Cape Canaveral. You can just uh, barely make out pad 39A there in the distance there through the window. Um, might be wondering why all the different mission control rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in Johnson, uh, as Dan was saying, you know, that's really mission control for the International Space Station and those operations. The control room that you see there is for everything leading up to launch. Um, as soon as Falcon 9 lifts off, uh, responsibility and control transfers to Mission Control Center here in Hawthorne. Uh, so just a Quick explanation for why right. why so many rooms with computers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and in addition to all the teams gathering here, we've got teams of our own gathering in Houston at Axiom headquarters. You can see there on your screen Axiom Mission Control with uh, the lovely Axiom family behind them looking in proudly. All right, well, you know, Dan mentioned that, you know, first we have launch. Then we got rendezvous and docking, and then we've got eight days of jam-packed activity on the ISS. So busy. <laughs> yeah, and, and docking day is not, it's not just a ride to space, right? You, you get up there, you open that hatch, and crew is working. I got a little chance to look at some of their timeline, um, and as soon as they open that door, they are getting invited in. They are getting trained on some uh, emergency procedures and then stepping right into payload activity, stowage transfers, um, and just generally getting acclimated. But they're working before they go to sleep, and the work doesn't stop there. <laughs> Um, it sounds a lot like everything leading up to launch itself. You know, everything is scheduled, mm -hmm. planned. Um, even, you know, we know that 
even sleep time is scheduled yeah. on the ISS. Um, it's something that's uh, incredible to me is that not only do you have work to do, where, you know, your science experiments and that kind of stuff, not only do you have to get some sleep. <laughs> where you can. Uh, but you also have to exercise, right? Yeah. The exercise time, uh, which can be a couple hours. Stage two, Luxo to start it. All right, so good news there. We have begun LOX load, uh, liquid oxygen loading on second stage. Uh, so that is currently underway for first and second stage, as well as loading of RP1, uh, which is our fuel on both first and second stages. Right. Right, and again, you know, some of those things that he talked about, it's all following a timeline, right? And we are listening to, for those important cues along the way that we're hearing on these nets or on the loops, um, uh, listening for where are we along in that timeline so we know exactly where we are in terms for launch as we count down at just T minus 15 from launch. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking uh, at my dashboard here. It looks like fuel load on second stage is now complete. Uh, so we're re beginning that LOX load as we just heard. Um, LOX load and fuel load continues on uh, first stage. Axiom crew continuing to wait, yeah. <laughs> following along with everything happening there uh, with the touchscreen uh, displays there above them, as well as their tablets strapped to their legs. Right. Everything continuing to look nominal for liftoff in just about 15 minutes. And as we approach uh, that liftoff in these final moments of our countdown to launch, Axiom Space founders Cam Gaffarian and Mike Suffordini wanted to take a moment to reflect on this mission. Well, this moment for me and Michael is a very special moment uh, in a beginning of many beginnings, right? The launch of AX-1 uh, going to International Space Station as part of our journey to build the first private commercial space station. And we're so grateful to be here and delighted uh, at this moment as part of this incredible journey to commercialize and privatize low Earth orbit. On behalf of Cam and I, we'd like to thank the entire team that's made this historic journey possible. The SpaceX team in particular has done a tremendous job of prepping our crew for a launch on their transportation vehicle. The crew itself has done a fantastic job of getting themselves ready and planning their research. NASA, of course, we can't do this without NASA's leadership and support. And to each of you in the Axiom Space family, we couldn't have done it without you. We're looking forward to a bright future together. T minus 14 minutes, seven seconds, and continuing to count down. Everything is still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon. That'll occur 17 minutes and 12 seconds after the hour. As a recap, Falcon 9 began propellant loading at T minus 35 minutes. We just heard loading of the RP-1 fuel. The kerosene fuel on stage two was completed right on time at T minus 20 minutes. We've still got fuel going on to the first stage. Looks like we're about 90% or so full right now. Fuel loading will finish up at T minus six minutes and we'll hear that call out in the countdown. Meanwhile, densified liquid oxygen is continuing to load onto both the first and second stages. First stage will close out at T minus three minutes. The second stage, we just began loading liquid oxygen at T minus 16 and a half minutes just a few minutes ago. That'll wrap up at the T minus two minute mark. Now we load the liquid oxygen as late as we can in the countdown. It's densified, that means it's ultra cold, well below the boiling point of liquid oxygen. That lets us put as much as we can on the vehicle for performance and getting it on board the vehicle just before liftoff means it won't warm up where you start to lose uh, the ability to put liquid oxygen onto the stages, into the tank. Uh, in the quantities we want. So it stays nice and cold, it doesn't bleed off, and that gives us the performance we need on Falcon 9. Continuing on, Falcon 9 checkouts of the thrust vector controllers, what we call TVC wiggles, you may hear that term, they're coming up. We're also going to be doing throttle valve checkouts on the Merlin engines. That helps control the power of the engines as we go through flight. For example, you hear a throttle down or throttle up as we prepare for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. As we come up on the 12 minute mark, the range continues to be go. Uh, roadblocks are up, all the hazard areas are clear. Airspace, sea space is good. The weather is go. Beautiful shots you can see here, blue skies. I'm looking forward to some great views from the cameras as we head into space. 
And finally, on the Dragon side, the Dragon mission director and team, they're reporting no issues. We've done the communication checkouts with the crew. You can see the crew axis arm has retracted into the launch position. You can see Dragon now with the strong back of the transport director and the umbilicals going to Dragon alongside of it. We've also armed the launch escape system, and obviously the crew is strapped in the Dragon capsule and they're ready to go. Final instructions of the crew will come in about a minute and a half at T minus 10. We'll listen to that. The crew displays will be configured for launch, and that setup will give the crew insight into how the launch is proceeding, and it provides constant updates on vehicle health. The T minus five minutes will be in the terminal count for Dragon. Dragon will transition to internal power, going to its onboard batteries and off of the external ground power. We're gonna hear continued callouts on the countdown net as we go from T minus 10 to zero, and then as we fly after T zero and liftoff, we'll hear callouts as we head into space. And that'll be letting the crew know as they reach each of the milestones. Now, next big event coming up at T minus 10 minutes is we're gonna do launch commit criteria and final instructions will be going to the crew. One other thing that you will hear is during ascent, you may hear one alpha, one bravo, two alpha. These are launch escape states. As the Falcon 9 flies, if a launch escape was required, the crew on board knows where they are passing various points in the countdown, and that would tell Dragon what sequence of events to execute to come off of the Falcon 9 and bring the crew back safely down under the parachutes in the ocean. Right now, T minus 10 minutes, let's listen in to the countdown now. Dragon, SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. SpaceX and Never, we confirm they're configured. Copy MLA, and on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, we're honored to have you aboard Endeavor for its third flight to the International Space Station. Axiom 1 marks a new step in commercial space flight and research. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. Thanks for those words, Arthur. I've got a few of my own. I'm going to let my crewmate Aton say it first, though. Shalom. כמה ימים לפני שאנחנו מציינים את המסע הגדול שלנו לחירות. And a few minutes before launching on this journey, I wish to share with you the words of the Greek poet קונסטנטין קוואפי that well describe the perspective of, of our marvelous crew. Keep Ithaca always in your mind. Arriving there is what you are destined for. But do not hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years. So you, so you are old by the time you reach the island, wealthy with all you have gained on the way, not expecting Ithaca to make you rich. Ithaca gave you this marvelous journey. X1, Rakia. Thank you, Eitan. I'm going to continue far less elegantly or eloquently, but uh, as we sit here on the precipice of this new era in human spaceflight, we do so on the shoulders of professionals at SpaceX, NASA, and Axiom. We um, want to thank all the teams at SpaceX, uh, Falcon 9, Dragon, the launch team, of course, closeout team, and all of the folks in mission control. Um, and, of course, our training teams. With NASA, boy, it's been tough. You know, the first time is always hard, and there's no playbook. It's all open field running, but with ISS program, commercial video development and flight operations, we've learned a lot and will continue to do so. We want to thank Kim and Seth for their vision, but especially all the people at Axiom for putting this mission together with the amount of miracles that they've performed. All of you, make no mistake, are the men and the women in the arena. Your faces are marred, if metaphorically, by the dust, sweat, and blood, and you strive valiantly. You will have no place with the cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. The crew of the great ship Endeavor is ready to sail her proudly, Arthur.
some heartfelt words there. Stage one, engine chill has started. All right, so there was the call that uh, we have begun to chill the engines on the first stage. So what we're doing right now is flowing a little bit of the super chilled liquid oxygen uh, through the turbo pumps on those M1D engines. There's nine of them at the base of the first stage. Uh, and that's essentially bringing them down to the temperature of that super chilled liquid oxygen to uh, prevent any thermal shock to the hardware. Uh, and just before that call, some really heartfelt words from yeah. Commander MLA uh, and Mission Specialist Aton Stibba. Um, really love hearing that commentary. Stage one, RPU load is complete. At this point in time, the at this point in time, uh, fuel is fully loaded on both the first and second stage. Locks loading continues uh, on both stages. Coming up on five and a half minutes, Kate's let us know that we've got the fuel load complete. Next is coming up, we're T minus five minutes. Dragon will be transitioning uh, configuration for terminal count and going on its internal battery power. Everything continues to look good as we're counting down. Dragon is in configure for terminal count. Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for strong back retracts. Heard the call out. We're pressurizing the tanks for strong back retract. We'll hear a sequence momentarily. Strong back is retracting. Actually, that's the start of about a one minute sequence. In about T minus four minutes, the clamp arms that you can see there will open. And then, strong back is retracting. And then we will see the retract from there. So we've heard the call out. That's the start of the sequence. Doesn't mean that the clamp arms uh, are late opening. It will take us a few more seconds. As you can hear, the excitement in the crowd is really growing oh, yeah. uh, here at SpaceX headquarters at Hawthorne, California. There you can see the clamp arms have begun to open. And next, we should see the strong back uh, begin to retract. This structure is what we basically use to transport uh, the fully integrated vehicle to and from the hangar, uh, from the hangar to the launch pad. And there you can see that the strong back retraction has begun. Everything continue to look nominal uh, as we're now under three and a half minutes until launch. RP-1 fuel is fully loaded on first and second stage. Uh, should be wrapping up LOX load on uh, the first stage momentarily and continuing to fill on second stage. Stage one, LOX load is complete. We're under three minutes until liftoff of the Axiom-1 mission. Dragon is the in terminal count and is on internal power. All right, there we heard that Dragon is on internal power. Um, as I was saying, we're getting close. The crowds are growing. The excitement is palpable. You can see there on the left-hand side of your screen, mich Mission Control here in Hawthorne, California, just behind where John and I are. Um, and then on the right-hand side, that looks like Axiom Mission that Control. That looks like Axiom Mission Control in Houston, Texas. Everybody's waving and saying, hey. All right, at this point in time, that lock load on first stage is complete. So the first stage is now fully loaded with all of its propellant. Lock load on second stage continues.
as we've mentioned before. Stage two, lock load is complete. All right, so there's that call. At this point in time, Falcon 9 Dragon is... Dragon is in auto idle. Dragon is fully loaded with all of its propellants, nearly one million pounds of that propellant. Next event coming gas up that started. right Falcon now, tank. the gas closeouts. We have finished pressurizing the storage tanks on board the Falcon 9. They gave the crew the heads up and they hear some loud venting noises. We're also going to vent down the liquid oxygen line that carried the locks up to the second stage. Generates a typical large white cloud of condensation around the strong back. Big event coming up now, T minus one minute. All the flight computers take over. Let's listen in to the last minute of terminal count. FTS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX Endeavor, we acknowledge, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. Chapter begins. Godspeed AX1. Stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 38 seconds into this historic mission, flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Orange telemetry nominal. Stage one, throttle down. Throttling down in the preparation for max dynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Next cue. Stage one, throttle up. Merlin 1D engines coming Eight back up to power. One Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. The crew calling out one Bravo should a escape situation arise. It tells the Dragon flight computer what profile to fly using the Super Draco engines. But everything is looking good on Falcon 9. We're getting nominal call outs from all the engineers and a great view from the ground camera and the onboard cameras. In back chill underway. Beginning to chill in the second stage turbo pump in preparation for its ignition coming up in just over half a minute from now. Coming up on about three and a half G's acceleration for the crew. We'll begin throttling down the Merlin engines to hold that period, that level of acceleration. Next event coming up, we're gonna get main engine cutoff stage of the one, main engines. Down. Get stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. You've heard the throttle down call out. We're holding three and a half G's for the crew. And Miko. Successful stage separation ignition of the second stage engine. On the left, the titanium grid fins beginning to slowly deploy. Great views from the first stage camera. 
The first stage now begins a slow flip maneuver. You can see the white uh, nitrogen gas plumes as we reorient for an entry back through the Earth's atmosphere a little bit later in the plus count. Second stage, we see the engine nozzle glowing red. Everything continuing to look good on the second stage. Should be hearing call outs coming up to the crew here shortly on how the trajectory is looking. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. It's what we like to hear. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And AOS Bermuda, acquisition of signal. The Bermuda tracking station now getting telemetry from the second stage of the Falcon 9 with the Dragon on top. T plus four minutes, 10 seconds. Everything continues to be nominal. First stage coasting to Apogee, and then it'll come back down for landing on the drone ship. Second stage partway through its lengthy burn to get the crew into orbit. So Kate, four and a half minutes in, everything continues to look good. What a absolutely Picture perfect liftoff. We've got a live view of the crew inside Dragon Endeavor. Looks like uh, everyone is still pretty comfy. Uh, as John had said earlier, we got Dragon to. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. All right, good call out there that trajectory is nominal. Uh, Never we copy. As John mentioned, we got to about three and a half G's there. Position of signal, New Hampshire. On the left-hand side of your screen, we can see the first stage as it is making its way back down to Earth. It's targeting a landing on our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas, which is parked a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Second stage on the right-hand side, everything continues to be nominal there as the MVAC engine is powering the second stage and Dragon in Denver, Dragon Endeavor to its targeted drop-off orbit. Absolutely beautiful views of both the first and second Dragon stages. Dragon trajectory nominal. All right, so coming up in about a minute and a half, uh, the first stage will execute the first of two burns required for today's landing attempt. Um, at about T plus seven minutes and 30 seconds, we'll see the entry burn begin. That's where the first stage will ignite um, the center engine first, and then a couple seconds later, ignite two more engines, so a total of three engine burn, um, which will last about 29 seconds. The entry burn slows the vehicle down significantly as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. The first stage sees high drag, which scrubs roughly 70% of that velocity by the time that the landing burn begins. Stunning view where you can see the curvature of the Earth there on the left-hand side. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. SpaceX is never we copy. There you can see the nitrogen gas thrusters. That's the puff of um, gas that you see there occasionally. That's used for uh, attitude control systems. We also utilize those grid fins that you see. There are four of them uh, placed around the booster. Uh, and those grid fins also help steer for a precise landing. Um, either at Stage the one, entry burn startup. Stage two, flight All right, there we can safe. see that that entry burn has begun. We are targeting a landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas today. Everything continuing to look nominal with trajectory and uh, MVAC performance there for our second stage on the right-hand side. So we are conducting the entry burn. Previously, the booster stage was- Stage one, entry burn shut down. That entry burn helps slow the booster down. It was going about 25 times the speed of sound. So we slow it down as it re-enters 
the dense part of the Earth's atmosphere. The next event is second engine cutoff, or SECO-1, as you see it there on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. That's two in thermal guidance. That's where we shut down the MVAC engine, or second Thank engine cutoff. Copy, Shannon. Stage one transonic. Note that our landing burn and second engine cutoff uh, will occur about the same Endeavor time. All right, we got a live view of the crew inside Dragon Endeavor there on the right hand side of your screen. Stage one landing burn. Landing burn has begun for the first day, Dragon first stage. SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. All right, great news there. Dragon Endeavor, nominal orbit insertion. SpaceX Endeavor, we copy, and it's great to be here. Zero G, we feel fine. Stage one landing leg deploy. SpaceX Dragon launch skip system disarmed. As you can see, this Falcon 9 has landed for the fifth time. All the while, great commentary there. Confirmed. While we can confirm the landing. Confirm landing there of the first stage booster. Also, almost simultaneously, great news uh, for the second stage. We heard that there was nominal orbit insertion uh, for Crew Dragon Endeavor. There you can see a live view inside our Dragon. Looks like the crew is beginning to adjust to zero-G. If you look at the right-hand side corner, it looks like indicator. we can see the zero-G indicator. Yeah. That, was one of my, that, that was one of the things I really wanted to see, what they were going to bring for their zero-G indicator, so I can't wait to see what comes on. It looks... I can't quite tell. Pokemon? <laughs> uh, maybe... Okay, well, hopefully it'll, it'll come into closer view. Yeah, but, and if not, we'll get to ask them later, hopefully. Yeah, great to see the crew here again, starting to... Like, really getting their first taste yeah. of microgravity. Yeah. Oh, it has ears. Oh, it's a bunny. It Is that like Thumper? I think it might be. I think that's Thumper from Bambi. <laughs> Love it. So right now, uh, the second stage is basically preparing for uh, dragon separation. Um, we are, the next step now that, uh, as we said, dragon has nominal orbital insertion, the second stage and dragon will separate. Views there of our uh, MVAC engine now shut off, no longer glowing that lovely shade of orange. Right now, the second stage is about 200 kilometers above Earth. Preparing now for stage separation. Excuse me, for dragon separation. For those of you that have just recently joined us, we had an on-time liftoff of the Axiom-1 crew. They are now in space and uh, are coming up to separation from second stage, at which point um, they will then begin to make their journey, continue their journey uh, to the International Space Station. The view that you're currently looking at is inside the Dragon trunk, which as you can see has just separated from the second stage. On behalf of the Falcon 9 team, Thanks, welcome to space. To Thanks for flying Falcon 9. You guys, enjoy your trip to that wonderful space station in the sky. Do some great research for us. We'll look to see you back here underground. Now, stand by for some words from LD. And MLA and, and uh, the rest of the crew endeavor. Glad we got to have some fun this morning. We'll probably be calling an early weekend over here at the Cape. Pass you over to Ann and the team. You'll be in good hands. Godspeed, Endeavor. Enjoy the rest of your flight. Cheers. Hey, Mark. It was a lot of fun. I venture to guess we had a little bit more than you did. We thank you and your launch team, Gersh, you and the Falcon 19. That uh, was a hell of a ride, and we're we'll looking forward to the next 10 days.
All right, some nice words there from a couple of key folks. Our first Quindar tone of the yeah. mission. Yeah. I queued up right when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> there we can. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda and New Hampshire. There we can see uh, Dragon Endeavor on its way to the International Space Station. It has separated. There's a view Dragon inside. Space, we had nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. There we can see over the shoulder of... SpaceX Endeavour, we copy, okay. Over the shoulder, previously, Commander uh, MLA was on the left, and pilot uh, Larry Connor was on the right. Live view inside the cabin. They just got the okay to lift their visors. All right. All right. So we can see that everyone is in space. Yeah. We can see that zero G indicator floating around. Great view there um, of Dragon Endeavor. Now in space with the Axiom One crew oh. on their way to the International Space Station. Yeah, I mean, this is a day of firsts. You know, this is my first time getting to participate in a launch like this. This is the first for Axiom. I mean, this is a first for space flight. And it's just wonderful to see such a picture, picture of perfect launch. It really was. We saw, we saw the landing <laughs> and we saw uh, orbital or uh, uh, zero G insertion at the same time. I mean, that was perfect. Yeah. It was wonderful to see. All right, well, as I just said, today's launch is one for the history books. So to punctuate this milestone that NASA and commercial companies are able to achieve together, we go now to Kennedy Space Center, where Megan Cruz is with NASA's Kathy Leaders. I am. I'm here right now with the Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Operations Mission Director. It's so great to have you here, Kathy. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the launch? Oh, my gosh. It's, <laughs> it's always like, you know, right in the bottom of my throat. I'm yes. holding. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Yes. But what a beautiful, beautiful sight. Yeah. So good to see it. I, I want to tell everybody working Artemis 1 wet dress, we're off the range. We're off the range for Axiom 1, and we can get moving. But um, you always want to hear the engine cut off. You always yes. want to hear that second stage engines lighting. You always want to hear, you know, each of these stages and we need to just keep carefully working through the different steps to get the, that crew there to the International Space Station safely. Yeah. What does Axiom-1 represent? Axiom-1 and also future private astronaut missions to the International Space Station. Hey, you know, NASA's original goal was to enable commercial industry. That was actually in our original Space Act agreement. And so here we are, you know, 60 years later, enabling that through our missions. And so I just feel like this is a culmination of 60 years of work for yes. us. And here we are once again getting to see, and for the first time, the first time getting